Okay, good evening everyone. Welcome to our evening Dhamma. And Happy New Year to those who celebrate the Chinese New Year. I don't personally celebrate the Chinese New Year. It's not... Uh, as Buddhists, I don't think we really have a New Year. But uh, Chinese New Year is in February. Thai, Sri Lankan, Laotian, Cambodian, Burmese New Year are all in, in and around April. Western New Year, of course, is about a month ago. But Ajahn Tong had this to say about the New Year. He said, may it have more to do, may it have more meaning than simply in regards to the year. Because there's nothing new. There's nothing new about this year. Seasons come and seasons go year in, year out. It's a cycle. The more things change, the more they stay the same, whatever that really means. I mean, I'd rather suppose say things may change, but they still just stay this. They really just stay the same. All these cliches, it's all been done before. But we have always the opportunity to, to make something new. This is the great, the great potential of, of now, the potential to go in any direction, to steer ourselves in any direction. And so things do change. This year does have many things that are different from last year for many of us. But his point was, let us not get caught up in our old habits. Let us leave behind the, the rut, the cycle, the, the, uh, the loops that we get caught up in that cause us suffering again and again. No? Let us not say, oh, another day, another year for us to do the same thing. A new year for us to make a mess of things once more. For us to suffer. So reflecting back on a year is a good, you know, it's a useful tool to reflect and to think how that year went and to look forward and think of how, how we can, what we can do uh, to better ourselves, you know. That which was good about last year, let us keep it and improve upon it. That which is, was uh, problematic about the last year, let us change. Let us find something new. And the other aspect of new is that no matter what good or bad comes, good or bad karma, it's all still in the cycle. The only thing that is truly new, and is truly new, is... Uh, freedom, freedom from the cycle. Because if we'd had freedom already, we wouldn't, we wouldn't be coming back to the cycle again and again. So we strive to find what is truly new, and that is the, the freedom from the cycle of samsara. Freedom from suffering, freedom from our bad habits, freedom from our attachments, freedom from those things. Those uh, parts of ourselves that we'd better be better off without. Let us make something new. But um, 
I think an accusation could be leveled that for most of us we aren't actually interested in the in the in the day or the year or, or any of that. In fact, I would I would accuse us of it's not a bad ac accusation. It's just a, it's a mild accusation that we don't care so much about the holidays. We don't care so much about our holidays themselves. We care about them as an opportunity for um, for celebration, for recognition, for not for recognition for uh, community, for the cultivation of of certain activities, qualities, etc. Now, unfortunately, a lot of the times the qualities that we are most interested in cultivating are the bad ones, right? So New Year's is a time of of debauchery, what we call celebration. Well, it turns out to be a, a great big hedonistic uh, pleasure fest. Right? That ends up with a lot of suffering. There's, it's one of the most dangerous days of the year, the, 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 the Western New Year is. It's a time when there's a lot of drunk driving, a lot of accidents. But holidays in general are, are a time for us more than they are for the day. You know? Celebrating the day seems kind of weird, no? Well, the day doesn't certainly doesn't care. Usually the person that we're commemorating doesn't care. Have Martin Luther King Day, well, I'm, I'm pretty sure it's not such a big deal to him anymore. But it's for us, right? It's for us to remember. It's for us, in fact, often just for us to have a, a reason to to gather and to cultivate whatever it is that we agree upon. So as Buddhists, I think you know where this is leading, a holiday has much more to do with us being holy than about worrying about the, whether the day is holy or not. In fact, the Buddha was rather critical of, or not critical, but um, pointed in, in, in this regard. He said, any day. Yeah, there's the, this nakata. Nakata is, I don't know what the word, how the word, nakata is a star, I think, or it has to do with the stars, astrology or something. Anyway, nowadays in Buddhist cultures it refers to, uh, refers to astrology, you know, f uh, fortune telling, telling your horoscopes. But the Buddha said a, a, a good star, a lucky star, Lucky, but by star means lucky conjoining of the the stars. A, uh, such a thing, and a lucky day, a lucky moment. What does it mean? A good moment. Sunakatang sumangalang, a good blessing, auspiciousness, omen, a good omen. Uh, never get this right. Anyway, a lucky moment, a good moment. So papa tangsu, oti tangsu kano. A good moment. Is when one is holy, when one cultivates holiness. So you remember. Remember the uh, the, uh, the Padikarata Sutta. Those of you who have heard this, of course, it's a memorable sutta. In the Majjhima Nikaya, it occurs several times and it repeatedly. It was ga they were gathered together because this was a sutta that many of the Buddha, the Buddha, and many of his disciples would repeat. And so you have uh, you have it repeatedly in the in the. Canon. This is where the Buddha says, "Atita nanwa kame yana patikang ke yana agatang." 
one should not go back to the past or bring up the past or worry about the future. Yadati tang pahinantang, what's in the past is gone already. Apatancha anagatang, what's in the future has not yet come. Pachupanancha yodhamang tatha tatha vipasati, whatever arises in front of you. Pachupana means present, but literally means what, what arises in front of your face, right in front of you. Tata tata vipasati. See all of that clearly. Vipasati is where we get the word vipasana. The Buddha talks about this. This is as how you have a good day. How you have an auspicious day, a special day, a holy day, really. So it's really talking about a holy day. You know, in Buddhism, we have holidays. There are many days that mark the procession of the year and yeah, the moon. There's you know, every every full moon is considered a holy day, holy day. But just following Hinduism, really. And so the question was, with the with the holy days of Hinduism, they have all these various uh, rituals and activities, and in Indian society, the, the, these former Hindus were asking the Buddha, well, what do we do? What do we do as Buddhists on the full moon? And the Buddha said, well, the, the tradition of the, of the noble ones is that on a holiday you would, keep, uh, you would keep strict meditation practice, meaning you wouldn't, you wouldn't have uh, sex or romantic activity, you would only eat in the morning, uh, you wouldn't engage in entertainment or beautification, and you would sleep on the floor. You, know, you, would, you would live your life as, as a monastic or as a recluse, as a, as a renunciant, really, for that day. So in effect, you would, you would become a holy person for that day. This is the idea, which is so much better than anything else you could do, giving gifts to the Buddha, you know, offering flowers to the Buddha, Buddha himself said, this isn't the way you, you honor a Buddha. This isn't the way you have a holiday. So we're much better looking at the Buddha's teaching. On, I mean, using this, this pattern for uh, keeping ethical precepts and meditator precepts, really, and taking on renunciant precepts for the day and practicing the Buddha's teaching, being in the present moment. We take these two together, this idea of, of the keeping of the eight precepts for meditators, and uh, along with the idea of practicing insight meditation in the present moment. It's, it, it, create, it makes it a holy day, and, and, and could make any day really a holy day. But it's a great excuse and, and a great means of cultivating energy, um, confidence and psychologically having a day having a special day and where you can um, keep in mind for instance today is the new year so keeping that in mind psychologically we have this idea that okay you know what, this, this is a good excuse to start and so on the new year now we we make something new leave the past behind Right? This is what the new year really is supposed to be. It's psychologically a, a tool for us to say to ourselves, oh, let the old be old, let's bring in the new, do something new. It's a great way to, to motivate us towards self-cultivation. The Buddha was very much about the here and now, any moment, not make excuses, you know, not necessarily to wait for holidays to do good things. He said that this makes us invincible, staying in the present moment, letting go of the past and the future, and 
being here and now, this is unassailable. Asanghi rang asangkupang. And you have to do it today. You know, really, we shouldn't wait for holidays, the Buddha said. Ajeva kichama tapa kochanya maranang suve. Who knows whether death will come tomorrow? So we work now. We work to better ourselves. Trying at all times to. free ourselves, to find happiness, doing what's in our own best interest, right? Making ourselves holy, becoming better people. It's always nice to have this time to, to take a break, to step back and to say, here, this is what, this is where I'm headed in the new year. This is, this for the next 360 some days, this is the direction I'm going to head gives us a starting point. So I'd like to wish you all a happy new year and I wish for you all to find holiness for yourselves, to find the present moment and to learn how to always live in, in, in holiness, to have a holy day every day. There you go. There's the. There's my. I know rather short, but I don't have a lot to say, and I'm here every night, so almost every night. So there's the dhamma for this evening. Wishing you all the best. <laughs>